Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, September the 18th. We're going to talk about the MU Homecoming Blood Drive. And I want to introduce you to Jacqueline Janorski, a good German name. Yes, that's <laughs> You're right. You're sure that's German? I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Carolyn Dade, good to have both of you here. So good to be here. Thank you for having uh, us. Tell us about the uh, Homecoming Blood Drive. When is it? So the Blood Drive this year will be September 30th through October 3rd from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Hearn Center. So yeah. four days all day long. We'll be at the Hearn Center welcoming all of MU's campus and then all of the Columbia community as well. Now, this has been a tradition for how many years? This is the 34th year, yes. I think we finally 34 realized. years. Yes. Do you have, no, this isn't a fair question, but I'm going to ask you <laughs> anyway. Do you have any idea how many units of blood in 34 years you've conducted? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I don't that's have a exact good, number. That's a, that's a good answer. Yes. Because your, your goal is 4,000 units? Yes. Right? And that's a lot of blood. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of blood. you got to get 4,000 people mm -hmm. to come in. Well, actually more than 4,000. Yes. So we're, our goal is 4,000 usable units of blood that are collected. So some people who come in aren't able to donate for various reasons. And so our goal is 4,000 actual usable units of blood. So you have to, well, fair to say, about 4,300 people or so to at least, at least yeah. if not more. come up with 4,000 units. Mm -hmm. Then what happens to that blood once it's collected? Yeah, so the first step in the process, that blood will then go to um, the Red Cross has this intern in St. Louis that does testing on the blood to make sure it's usable for patients. And then it's sent out to hospitals all across the Midwest mm -hmm. region. A lot of it does stay local in um, in Missouri, even in Columbia. But I know last homecoming, the blood that I donated at the blood drive was sent to Plano, Texas. So it really can go all over the Midwest. And the mm -hmm. blood that people donate at the homecoming blood drive really does impact not just our small community right. here in mid-Missouri, but all across the country. Well, of course it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. Of course it does. Because you're giving a part of yourself and to help heal someone who is in need mm -hmm. you got to feel good being a part of this this is a big thing isn't it yeah it's really exciting to be a part of this and i know i'm um, on the red cross website i learned that someone needs blood every two seconds in the united states so that's a really big deal that we're able to somebody needs people. blood mm -hmm. every two seconds in yes, the united states absolutely it's a crazy amount of people it's so. insane but that's one of the great so that's things. 30 people a minute yes mm -hmm. 30 people a minute in the time that we're talking here, in in four minutes or so, you're talking of almost 200 people that are needing blood. Right, absolutely. And that's one of the great things, though, is that each blood donation can actually have the possibility to save up to three lives. Right. So the 4,000 units that we're hoping to collect has the possibility to affect 12,000 patients' lives, which is a really great impact when you think of, you know, yes, you're affecting that patient, but you're also affecting the lives of everyone who's important to them as well. Okay. So... The uh, the blood drive runs September 30th through mm -hmm. October 3rd. What time do you start in the morning? 11 a.m. And where? Hearn Center on Columbia MU's campus. And what do people need to do to, to give blood? Absolutely. So you don't have to make an appointment. You can just show up at the Hearn Center if you want. Uh, but if you do want to make an appointment, you can go to giveblood.com. Donate blood. Donate, Donate blood. blood .com. <laughs> I messed that one up. Donateblood.com. Make an appointment there and just come on in. Make sure you have a photo ID with you and then we'll take care of you. Why do you have to have a photo ID? It's a Red Cross regulation. Yeah. They, they they like to make sure that you know you are who you say you are. Okay, so you got, you got to have photo ID. <laughs> yes. Come in and uh, if you if you don't make a reservation, just stop just, by just and stop you can on get, by. You get blood. How long do you think it takes? Last year we had almost no wait times at all, so the okay. entire process could be done as quickly thirty minutes to an hour. All right, right, you got it. And then you get juice and oh yeah, we have oh, all sorts of fun of snacks, snacks after. <laughs> okay, all right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming by. Mark it on your calendar to September thirtieth through October third yeah. for the uh, annual MU Blood Drive. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And best of luck. All right, now I want to introduce you to Amy Wilder from the uh, Arrow Rock Lyceum Theater. Good to have you here, Amy. It's good to be here, Paul. Coming down from uh, Arrow Rock, Missouri. you got a couple of things coming up. Um, first of all, let's talk about the magician. Yeah, so October 5th, we have Mike Super coming. He's a magician you might have seen on America's Got Talent. Um, we don't know exactly what he's going to do, but it will be amazing. Okay, um, so you don't know what he's going to do, but you guarantee that it will be an amazing show. It will be magical, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Spoken by, like a true PR person. Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> if he if he was on America's Got Talent, he's going to be good because obviously he's yeah, got talent. You know, we don't know exactly what he'll do, but he's done things like teleport to different parts of the theater and some teleport. Of his shows. Yeah, teleport people um, or teleport objects himself. Um, he did that. He did that. On, I'm I'm not saying he's going to. I'm saying he has on America's Got Talent. So. Um, he has a pretty wide range. Of okay, skills, so we don't well, know just, what he's just do. be prepared. Be prepared to be teleported. <laughs> Think of Star Trek. <laughs> you, there you go. Be from the stage out into the lobby, oh. or from the lobby up to the stage. So we don't know what's going to happen, but it's Mike Super. And when is his special magic show? That'll be on October fifth. And that's one night only, right? One night only. Okay. Yes. All right. Then you have the Swing Time Canteen. Swing Time Canteen opens tomorrow, and it is our last musical of the season. Uh, it is about a fading lady of the great screen, Marion Ames. Um, is this set in World War II? It's set in World War II. It's in 1944, and she's had some films that have flopped. Um, and she wants to do something good, so she rounds up an all-woman band, and she's touring, um, performing for the USO in Europe. Okay, and it's called so. Swing Time Canteen. Swing Time Canteen. And I would imagine she's doing all the old uh, World War II hits? Yeah, if you love the Andrews Sisters, oh, you'll hear a oh. lot of their music in this. Um, Boogie so. Woogie Bugle Boy? Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, Don't now, Sit do Under they, the Apple Tree. Do yeah. that, do it. Are, are they pretty much coming up with the sound of the Andrews sisters? It's very similar, yes. Um, and actually, I believe Maxine Andrews made a cameo on the original Off-Broadway production in the in the late 90s, just before she passed away. Really? Yeah. But I think all of the Andrews sisters are gone now, aren't they? They are, yes. Yeah, but boy, their, their music will live on. So if you like the Andrews sisters, Swing Time Canteen is for you. That's right. And this is running when to when? Uh, this opens tomorrow with the matinee, and it runs through the 29th. Okay. So, so it opens uh, September the 19th That's and runs right. through September the 29th. Then you take a break for a little bit, and you've got, uh, you have Christmas and coming And then we up? open a Christmas carol in December. So. What is that one? Um, that's our, this will be our sixth year of A Christmas Carol, which was adapted by Quinn Gresham, the artistic director. So. Okay. All right, Amy Wilder, thank you so much for coming by. And if people want more information um, on that magic show or the Swing Time Canteen, you can go to your website, which is? Lyceumtheater.org. Okay. And if you go to the magic show, be prepared to be teleported somewhere, <laughs> maybe out of this world. Who knows? <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.